Since the beginning, all God has ever wanted was a home. And since the very beginning, all God has ever wanted was a family. And that's what Eden was. Eden was this place of overlap. It was this place of heaven and earth. And it wasn't the entire earth. A lot of people think that the entire earth was a great big garden. But no, Eden was a very small place on the earth. And God comes to Adam, to humanity, and says, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to go into all of the earth, that the entire earth would be a temple that humanity would be a priesthood, that the earth would exist for the revealing and the praise and the worship of, of mighty God, of Yahweh himself. And so, yep, we are changing the name of our church from Seattle Revival Center to Eden. And in doing so, we are saying yes to what we call this Edenic mandate. And that is to restore cities and nations with the power and love of Jesus Christ. And this works by the people of God being a priesthood. It looks like an army of reconcilers with a heart of restoration. And this is what I believe that the Lord is doing, not just here, but on the earth, is that He is preparing us for the greater things. And I am so excited about this Edenic ethos, this incredible philosophy, this new identity, because I believe with it is gonna come a new power and a new reputation, a new authority that we're going to see God's kingdom come, His will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Our DNA really hasn't changed. Um, what we are seeing is, is more of a panoramic vision of what the Lord is calling for us to do in, this, in our next epoch. And that is that as a generation, we are saying yes to the heartbeat of the Father that none would perish. And that means, and I'm gonna be kind of bold here, if we're going to call ourselves Christians, we have got to have a global vision. We have got to have the Father's heart for cities and nations. And so I believe that this new name captures the heart of God, that none would perish. And I'll also be pretty bold. Uh, it is our dream and desire that we would actually have an Eden in every nation, that we would have a garden dynamic, a, a place of union and family uh, in every nation. And I believe it is our role as Eden to prepare the earth for the reentry of King Jesus. In this last year, I was, I was journaling and dreaming into Eden with our team. And I, I wrote out in my journal, uh, I believe that we're gonna plant a campus in October of 2023. And I thought that was completely unrealistic. If you look at the church planting manuals and guidelines, looking at the natural at our calendar there's no way that that was that that was possible but i shared it with our elders and said you know i believe that the edenic mandate holds us accountable to be multiplying and to be spreading <laughs> and just after we met as an elder team a young man came in to the church with two other elders in the region and shared their desire to plant a campus or an extension of our house. And I said, what are you thinking ballpark wise? And they said, October, 2023. And I just started laughing. I thought, you can't, you can't make this stuff up. So sure enough, you know, this coming fall, we are gonna be planting what we call Eden North. Uh, we'll be meeting in Arlington. It's a once a month convening until 2024, at which point we're going to be meeting every Sunday. If I could sum up our calling in two words, it would be to restore. 
So I really like this theme, restored to become. It's this whole idea of that our restoration is, is the beginning point. It's the portal that catapults us into the adventure with Jesus. Now at the conference, we're gonna have a bunch of our, our friends coming here, we've got special speakers. <laughs> I'm super excited about it. We're gonna be announcing those in the, in the days to come. But we are gonna look at our four rivers here in Eden. We know that Eden had four rivers, okay? And so do we, and our four rivers are a little bit different. And uh, this is our model by which we are hoping to see our mission engage. The first river is family. This is that place of community, doing life together, being seen, heard, known, and changed. Okay, you're not just another brick in the wall. You're not just somebody that fills a seat, a pew on a Sunday. The second river is the river of harvest. And there's some tension there, right? Because if we are a tight-knit family dynamic, are we willing to leave the 99 to go after the one? The celebration of the lost coin that's been discovered, the prodigal son that comes home and saying that within our culture, celebration looks like somebody that thought they were an orphan being awakened to the reality that they are a son. Our third river is justice. This is that place of being a voice for the voices being a defender of the fatherless. This is that place of loving and giving without any strings attached, knowing that that means so much to the Lord. And the fourth river is the river of restoration. And that's restoration to the whole person. This is that, that Greek word sozo, which means salvation. Salvation to the whole man, your mind, your will, and your emotions. The breaking off of all generational curses, soul ties, soul attachments, knowing that restored people restore others. And so this is what we're going after at our conference. I think that our conference is going to be so epic because of how intentional it is. And I think people are going to come with, with uh, they're going to receive clarity regarding this vision. And I think that people are going to see how they can be a part of it, how they can run with us. We know that we're not just to have a vision, but we are to write it down, to make it plain, so that everybody can see, so that everybody can run. And if I could say anything, I think that it is time to mobilize the people of God. I think people are, are tired of sitting in chairs, and I, I think it's time to run.